Hi, I'm Glenn Southern, and today we're going to take a look at the Baby Brother 2 ZBrush. So this is ZBrush Core Mini. It was released recently, and it's absolutely free. It's a very cut-down version, but it gives you a real good taste um, to see if this is the kind of thing that you, you want to use. So dive right in with us and take a look at ZBrush Core Mini. Okay, so let's dive right into ZBrush Core Mini. So what you see on screen is something that I've sculpted for this um, tutorial or, or walkthrough really. And what you're gonna see here on the right hand side now is a time lapse of this model being made. So you can actually, as I explain the interface and I explain what's going on, you'll be able to watch me um, down here. Um, and I think it was about an hour. So you'll get an idea of, of how I would start with a sphere and then work through. And what we're gonna do while that's happening down here on the right hand side is we're gonna work through up the left of the interface across the top and down. We're not gonna cover all this down this side because you don't need to know everything there. So I'm gonna try and keep it as brief and as brutal as I can with just giving you what you need to get going with this software. So before we do that, there's two things I want to talk about. So one, the upgrade path. So this is ZBrush Core Mini. This is free and it's very, very limited. And it's only really one part of the whole ZBrush family. It's one tool, essentially, one, one process, which is, which is the equivalent of something called Sculptress Pro. So it's very, very efficient. It just sculpts um, and there's not a lot more you can do with it. But what you want to be thinking about is where you go from here. If you're liking this, then you would upgrade to from ZBrush Core Mini to something like ZBrush Core, which is a cut down version of Big ZBrush, but it has the next kind of level of everything you're going to need. And then obviously upgrade to ZBrush. And I have to say, um, this not a sponsored video in any way. I've got a loyalty to ZBrush, to Pixel Logic because I bought my first license in 2001. Um, so I actually, me as, as Glenn only own one license. I've got 11 licenses for the studio, which are on a, a volume license, but my own personal license has been with me since 2001 and I've never yet paid for an upgrade. So they give you upgrades free every year. So this is the best value software that there is. So you can see there, when that happens, if you see a picture pop up, that means that when you don't move your cursor for a while, it gives you a, um, some of the pictures from ZBrush Central. So don't be surprised if Amazing Heart pops up while you're working. So the second thing I want you to do is if you're enjoying all of the sculpting and the, the you know me teaching you how to kind of make stuff in so many different ways, then please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to build the channel's uh, numbers up so we can get more done. Um, and we've gone from face-to-face -face training to finally get into doing online training. And we're using YouTube as one of the main ways. So please subscribe. If you're liking this video and you're liking what we're doing, then give it a like. And then don't forget the notification bell, as you already know. And that means we can let you know when we, when we upload, which at the moment is Wednesdays and Fridays. So straight onto the interface then. So the model's open in the in the screen and I'm moving it around. Now I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. Um, it doesn't matter what you use tablet-wise. I do recommend that you get a tablet though. Um, I definitely recommend Wacom because I've worked with them for such a long time and they just work. There are plenty of options on the market these days, so do a bit of research around that. Um, and if you want, jump into my groups and forums and I'll give you some advice on why I think Wacom still the one that you should be going for with um, for you know for a long time really it'll keep you going for such a long time and um, the, the the second thing is if you use a mouse it's just basically the click is either on or off obviously the big big thing about tablets is the pressure sensitivity so when we're doing brush work like this you want to be able to press more and get more that's the big big advantage of a, of a stylus and a, a graphic tablet so let's quickly run through the interface as fast as we can. So we've already sculpted this as you're watching here on the right. We can change the materials just by clicking on them. Very different than, than the main ZBrush because you would have to do what's called flood fill that on to keep it. Well, these can just change as you want. So we'll keep that on the basic material. That, in fact, no, we'll keep it on the basic gray matte cap. Uh, this red wax, you'll see this in Blender. You'll see this in... Um, uh, well obviously in core ZBrush, in the main ZBrush, sorry. 
Um, it's a very common material now, and it's what's called a matte cap. So it's generated from an image, um, which is we're going to do some tutorials on that in the next few weeks. Color up here. So not only so let's go back to our let's go matte cap here, and then as you can see, if we start with white and go all the way to black, that's purple, not black. There you go, black. That's quite useful for seeing a silhouette. Um, and again, strangely enough, in, in the main ZBrush, you will get an icon up here that shows you a silhouette, so it shows how useful it is. So sometimes you might just want to, to, to switch to black to see if you're getting your volumes right. So as you can see with mine, if, the, if it's looking good in a silhouette, then it's probably going to re what we call read well, which means looks look well. So that's the colors. And again, you you won't get as much of a, of a color change, say, for example, if you use gold and then go to purple. It could look muddy and dark. It's you know you're gonna have um, you, you know depending on what you want to to try and achieve, you would probably be best sticking to the basics. Then you've got your brushes, and there's only eight brushes instead of the million, million, million that there are in ZBrush. So I'm gonna quickly run through it as fast as I can. So we've got before before I do the brushes, actually, don't forget you've got to be able to change the size of these brushes, which is a little bit further out, and it's keyboard S is going to give you a uh, popping up on screen wherever your cursor is for the size. There you go. And then you've got for this one, which is the intensity, you've got U on the keyboard. And that means you know, it's going to give you more intensity, which we'll show in the brushes now. So as you see this happening, the top here, top left, and that, or if you see this happening, that means I'm changing the brush size. Okay, so we'll start at the top of the brushes with standard, the most common one. And this is the one we all started with all those years ago. And that's going to give you a basic rounded stroke. So I'm just literally stroking on the canvas there. If I want to smooth that down, I just hit shift on the keyboard. I don't bother with the smooth. There's no actual smooth tool. It's just holding shift down on the keyboard. And that's the same PC and Mac, just so as you know. Um, undo, control Z. So we can easily undo those strokes. So it remembers all that for us. Uh, I don't use standard a lot really. I used to use it a lot with paint, but I don't really use it with sculpting a lot because I like this one here. And this one's called Clay Build Up. And this is low intensity, um, sorry, uh, like lowish size, lowish intensity. And you get, let's, let's work down the model a little bit. This is the one where you're building up things like muscles. So keep that intensity even lower. Just stroke up along here and you can see as I smooth with shift and then build up, smooth, build up, that's the process we'll use for nearly everything. So we're going to stroke along and then smooth it down, stroke down here, smooth it down. That's pretty much how we would do most of our building up of the, of the, of the core shapes, by smoothing them down and building them up. And building them up, clay build up, is the effect of adding clay. Uh, that's not what that's not what's happening underneath, but that is what we're emulating. Where it's as if we've taken some clay and we've stuck it on the surface. Okay, inflate quite straightforward. Watch this. I don't really need to explain this, do I? Bigger brush, inflate. So there you go. You might think it's a bit gimmicky, but it's great when you've got things like the ears, for example. So you've sculpted the ears, but you just want to fatten them down at the end. So low intensity. That's too low. And then if you just do this, it could just fill up that volume for you. Then with a smooth and fill up the volume. So it is useful. It's it's, it's not just for making big noses. It, it, it gives you, it can it can really, so watch the lips as I, as I go across them. See how they tighten together? So it can be quite useful in lots of different ways. That's inflate. Pinch is pinching things together. Not one I use a lot, but it's there if you need it. Move the second biggest one that we have. So always dependent on your draw size uh, I keep touching intensity there so draw size if you watch this now you see how it's moving there and I'm actually moving both sides of the mesh here and that's because I've got this button on which is symmetry if you don't have that on you're going to get this effect which is probably what you want towards the end because you do want to break the symmetry but while you're doing all of your roughing out and all your blocking just keep symmetry on and that's keyboard X so if, that, if you want the shortcut for that it's just X is on and off okay so we're whizzing through this now so snake hook that's how you make Loki's horns so we'll just uh, take the horns here and we'll just pull them out like so a little bit low on the intensity there you can see what I'm doing there and just pulling it out. Smooth it down, carry on pulling. 
so it pulls it out of the mesh for you okay again not something that i use a lot of but it's there if you you know if that's if that's your bag really i'm undoing so we don't, we don't want to keep messing too much with this okay um snake hook done so slash i love because this is a similar to a brush that we've got in the, in the main z brush called dam standard which is called dam standard because it's made by damien um which is quite interesting so just keep the draw size low and then you can see there with intensity depending on the level of your intensity this is how we get um, um, the, the deep scores into the skin so this is where you would get once you're onto a wrinkle stage then you'd be and you want wrinkles in the eyes these are all done with um, this one um, and if it, you want a really tight line then so it's a small draw size and a slightly higher intensity, smaller even than that. And that's how you get the little wrinkles that you would, you know, when you're on the final, final bit of your model and you want to put the detail on. Don't be bothering with this later on. Now that's interesting that that's come up. Um, it's good timing actually. So the ZBrush Core Mini's got a limit to polygon count. If you hit that polygon count and you won't know that while you're working, once we get onto the mesh, I'll show you. But it says you have to reduce this or upgrade. Now, you can't blame them for this because they're giving you this for free. So this is stopping you going too far with it. So once you hit a limit, so the, sorry, the mesh is currently too dense for this version and it will knock it back down for you. So you have to reduce the mesh. And as you're working, you could just manually do it here with low, medium and high. And as you can see, that's around 762 active polygons, 762,000 active polygons. Once it hits around that 700 mark, it makes you go down, um, which, you know, that, that this is basically a gateway drug into using this product. So that, you know, that's saying, you know, if you're feeling like you need more than this, then go ahead and upgrade. Um, and that's, you know, I'll put the prices in the details down below. Um, so, uh, and the last one here, another good one, is H polish. So, see that jaw where I've gone too far with that? So, H polish with a slightly lower intensity, and it will just knock off the tops. It's what it's very similar, or it's or it's what we would call in the main Z brush. There's a flatten tool, and this it, polish is made from a flatten process. So, it's basically flattening the edge of the. Or, or, or the um, the front face of the of the model wherever you're brushing and that's great for things like rocks and for well what I'm doing here where you want the sort of like where the bone might be um, but be careful because it is destructive underneath so it will take away any you know any de detail that you you've done so be a little bit careful of it people when they start digital sculpting get things very blobby and very round in there and that's what happens when you use a lot of this which is the standard brush so try and get used to using clay build up and then a lot of this, a lot of flattening. So if you're used to drawing more and you're always looking at what we call the planes in a model, then this is a good way you could you could build up a model just with the planes with the with using flatten. So you know don't be afraid to try different things like that. Okay, so let's whiz through a little bit further. So creates a new sphere, so we could get rid of that and just start again with a sphere. You only get two options in this: you get a sphere or a block of stone. So it's either a square or a round, so it's it's not too difficult. Most characters start with a with a circle, and if you want to go and experiment, then just start with the cube. We've done draw size and intensity, low, medium, and high, and polygon. So what we've we got here, export an image, straightforward. So it just takes away what's on screen and gives you a, a an image, and you've got export for three D printing, which is going to I'll just I'll do it for you, and oops, I hit the wrong button. Then I went to ZBrush Central, which is the next one. 3D printing, just it's just going to give you this, which is an OBJ. So there's only one option there. Um, let's just shut that down. So you're going to, an OBJ is a format that you'll see in most um, 3D modeling worlds. So you can 3D print with an OBJ. So it's quite it's quite useful. And then you've got two upgrade buttons. So we're through the interface already, and you've got enough there to get yourself sculpting and doing everything that I've done on the screen. Over on the right hand side, I won't touch everything, but we've got um, perspective on and off. So I'm clicking that and it's also P on your keyboard. And that is really interesting. You, you might not really understand what's happening until you do this, which is putting the floor on. So as you can see, if you can see that floor now, 
it's either orthographic or perspective. Now the real world's in, in perspective, obviously. Orthographic, everything's the same size going backwards in, into the distance. And that's useful when you want to do things um, directly through a model. So if I turn perspective off, and as I bring this around, hold shift, it will snap exactly to the side. And that's the same as if you're looking in a 3D program where you're looking at the top, the side, the front, the back. So that's how you get what's called your orthographic views by holding shift and rotating. Okay, move down. We want, again, we're not going to cover all of these. You've got this is a very important one here. You've got frame, and frame will literally bring it to the middle of the screen. And then you've got move, zoom, 3D, and rotate. I don't use these at all. If you're using these, then you're probably using a mouse. You're not used to using your um your or your graphic tablet yet so I would literally say to everybody don't touch these you don't need move and, and rotate and scale just get just get into not using them at all and just get used to using your 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 tablet um, one that I did miss up here we've, we've done floor on and off and we've done perspective on and off uh, and the last one is the most important one is this so this is shift and F and that shows you your wireframe so this is the last thing I'm going to talk to you about, but this is why this is very different than anything else in, in ZBrush and why this is what came in with Sculptress Pro into ZBrush and it's dynamic tessellation. So the number of polygons that make up this model, you can see with Shift and F there, is, that's the model without showing the wireframe. That's the wireframe. If I sculpt using clay build up now in this area, see how it's getting darker? What that's actually doing is it only adds triangles wherever I need them. So, and to prove that, I'll go to um, slash small small draw size, and I'll do a scrape through the surface. Now, with the wireframe on, you can't really tell what's going on, but you see with that slash, because I'm getting really deep into the surface, it's needing to give it more polygons. And that's how you'll end up with your polygon going through the roof really quickly. We're at 500,000 there now. If I just keep doing this, you can see the poly count will go up and up and up. It's 600, 700, 600, 700, and suddenly it'll be done. There you go, reduce. So now it has to go back and calculate that back down. So don't be doing the surface detail until you absolutely need to. So you keep it as low as, as long as you can. See, it's taking a minute there to, to reprocess the whole model. So you don't want this happening all the time. So don't get into doing all of this scoring and all of these other things. And also, to remove that, the, the best way is this. So you just hold, you, you already know how to do it. So you just hold shift and smooth it down. And as you smooth it down, it's asking me to reduce again. So I, I, I've proved the point there that we what we don't want to be doing is going up high very quickly because you will run out of, of, of the allowed amount of polygons very quickly. Now I'm back down to 280,000 now and the more you smooth the lower that number gets so look it's not affected it that much. If you're at the point where you want to go really high res and do that kind of detail then you probably need to be thinking about upgrading at that point. Um, it, 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 this is a, this is a gateway into it and this is a good tester and makes you, makes you decide whether you want to enter this world. This isn't your, once you're in there, this isn't the tool you'd be using a lot. So bear that in mind. And that's called dynamic tessellation in here. It's not, um, later on, you might have to look at something like Dynamesh. And what that does is it averages the polygons across the whole surface. This is just doing it in one local area where we need it. And it's a very common way of modeling now. Okay, that's it. That is literally everything that's in ZBrush Core Mini. So download it take a look see if it suits you it's free so it's you know you've, you're losing nothing so so have a go of it and um, take a look at some of our other videos we've got all sorts of videos on on how to create stuff uh, in new and innovative ways so we've got vr we've got things like mobile sculpting with the ipad and um, there's lots of different ways to create this sort of stuff uh, and that's one of the things we do is we try and show you how to do it so make sure you subscribe Hit the notification bell so we can let you know when we're uploading and have a great week.